Hey everybody, this is Tracy from Indiana Bushcrafters and Butterfly Bushcraft and I'm packing up tonight because we've got our fall gathering starting tomorrow. So I'm going to give you a quick rundown here of the things I have for my pack. Okay, the first thing I have is my shelter and I'll mention that I do have an underquilt and top quilt. I have my Go Outfitters Adventure top quilt and underquilt that are already out in the car. So I don't have those here to show you but you've probably seen them in the videos, if not you will. So for my shelter, I've got my Go Outfitters Go Camping Hammock. It's got an integrated bug net. And here I've got my Go Outfitters Apex Camp Shelter. And here I've got my Go Outfitters, the, I've got my tree straps in here. And I've got a gear locker in here. And I've got my ridge line in here. And I've got my titanium tent stakes in here. Back there, I've got a grabber's all-weather space blanket that I use primarily as a, like a welcome mat underneath my hammock so I don't have to step out with my wool socks onto the ground with my um, to get my boots on and things like that because I don't like getting leaves and all that stuff up in my hammock. Uh, I've got a Bushcraft USA poncho that can also be used as a shelter. Down here, I've got some miscellaneous carabiners some paracord. Back here I've got my Sandpiper of California bug out bag. It's my main pack. I've got a fall niven ceramic whetstone in case I need to do just a little bit of touch up in the field of my knives. I take good care of my knives though so they should take care of me just fine. Got a mora back here because I kind of like the mora for like light carving around the fire like if we're carving spoons or we're making feather sticks or things like that. We're going to be doing a lot of demonstration type things this weekend, so I brought a couple extra things just to play with. I've got my Baco Laplander folding saw. I'm not bringing an axe or a hatchet this trip because we will be in a state park, so I'm not going to be doing any heavy-duty chopping or anything like that. I've got my LT Wright Genesis knife with uh, the butterfly ferro rod that Chris Gustafson at Michigan Wildfire made for me. The reason I got a carabiner on the back of my sheath is because I generally don't wear a belt. So if I put a carabiner in there, I can attach it to my pack and it's less likely to fall off. I'm going to be making a baldric, so I don't have that problem so much. Okay, here I've got my favorite neck knife. This is a Deer Creek Forge mini caper made by Bruce Proser. I really love it. This knife's got a lot of sentimental value for me as well. In the back here I've got a little ferro rod that tucks in and I've got a little sail needle tucked in there too. So if I need to do field repairs. I actually did make a bag the other day out of an old pair of jeans and I used the inner strands from some paracord and I sewed it up with a sail needle. Um, I've got Leatherman Charge ALX a multi-tool just because you never know when you might need something like that. Okay, here's uh, my little fire kit and I've got some kind of nifty things in here from some special people. I've got a striker here that Jamie Burley from South Reliance Outfitter and Pathfinder School gave. He gave this to me. I love it. It's my favorite. It works great. Got some shirt. I've got some pyrite. If you haven't played with this, it's pretty neat stuff. So we'll be playing with that. I've got a striker. I've got a ferro rod. Somewhere in here I've got a little bit of steel wool. I got some fat wood. Here's some steel wool. Steel wool, fat wood, char cloth, jute twine, miscellaneous tinder. I don't anticipate having any trouble finding tinder this time of year out there, but this is not that big of a package and it's got a lot of sentimental value. This is a knife that I got from one of my dear friends, Ted Hilden, at Texas Mini Heat. So it's a pretty nifty little thing. Isn't that beautiful? It tucks right here into this nice little tin. And I got this tin, not all of the contents, but this tin and a lot of the contents from my, my friend Bruce Proser at Deer Creek Forge. So. It's kind of special to me, but that's my fire kit. I do have a, a big lighter as well in the part of my kit that I carry around with me. Okay, I am going to be doing some cooking this weekend, 
and I'm going to be showing some folks how to do some do-it-yourself freezer bag meals so that you don't have to rely on Mountain House. Uh, Mountain House meals can be pretty good, but they can be kind of expensive and maybe not always the healthiest. So I made up a couple different things, and I'll show you a couple of the things that I've got. Um, first one I'm going to show you is the dessert. This here is kind of like a s'mores type of dessert. What you do with this one is you get some water in your pot to almost a boil and you just set the bag in the water until the chocolate chip melts. You don't add water to the bag in this one. It's got some graham crackers broken up, some semi-sweet chocolate chips, marshmallows, some coconut, and some toasted walnuts. So you got that. And then in here I've got breakfast and a dinner. I'll show you the dinner first. So this is a, a Thanksgiving dinner I made, and I always write on here how much water to add and how long to let it sit. This is Thanksgiving dinner. Add one cup of near boiling water and the can of chicken. Let's give it a little bit of a squeeze to mix everything together um, and let it sit for 15 minutes. I am going to say if you're going to squeeze one of these freezer bags, Make sure to, to gently squeeze all the air out first before you seal it because steam will accumulate in the bag. And if you're squeezing it while the steam is filling up the bag, the bag could actually pop open and explode on and spill all over you. So along with that in my freezer bag cozy, I've got the can of chicken that goes in there. You just use a little three ounce can of chicken. Throw that in there too with all the, the broth. But yeah, I've got some white rice, some Parmesan cheese, some... Um, chicken gravy mix, and I put a bunch of spices in there, some poultry seasoning, some black pepper, some dehydrated onion, and I can't really remember what else. I'd have to look. And then for breakfast, I did a do-it-myself like instant oatmeal. In this one, you add three quarters cup of water and let it sit for five to ten minutes. I made this plain so that you can kind of customize it with whatever add-ins that you like. So what I've got in here is I've got some one minute quick cook Quaker oats, and then I've got some of the regular Quaker oats, the whole grain oats that I put through my Vitamix to turn into like a powder. And there's also some powdered milk in here. So this is unsweetened. And I'm gonna suggest that if you have to add water to a freezer bag meal, that you get your water hot to near boiling, um, and then measure it out into like your cup or mug first and then pour from there into the bag so you don't pour too much water into, into the bag. Um, I, I brought some add-ins for my oatmeal too. There's a variety of different ones that you could put in there, but for tomorrow I've got a mixture here of some dried peaches, dried mango, and some <clears throat> craisins, a little bit of coconut, some walnuts, just a whole bunch of really good yummy things in there. A bunch of fruits and nuts, things like that. Fruits and nuts in the state park. Okay, and now for just a little seasoning kit pack here. I've got a couple packs of hot chocolate. I've got some emergency that I bring because I do have a tendency to get dehydrated, especially when it's warmer, and that does have some electrolytes in it. Um, so that's just an easy thing to throw in my pack. I got some sugar. I've got some little spice containers. This one's got some garlic powder and it's got some Lowry season salt, salt, black pepper, some more sugar. This is sugar as well. Some olive oil, camp suds, a sponge. Back here, I've got my Trangia burner that's a little bit melted, but that's okay. Just the top melted. And I've got my zebra pot. This is a 12 centimeter zebra pot. I am going to say that this is the older model. I like it, but it's got these little plastic clips on it. So if you're going to use this one, you need to take those plastic clips off before you heat it or they might melt. Um, you can buy replacement clips for that. They do make some stainless steel ones. Some of the newer models of these have the stainless steel clips already. If you haven't seen a zebra pot or a billy pot before, it's kind of got a lid like this. It's got a small pan on the inside that you can use as a plate, a bowl, or a double boiler. I'm actually going to store some of these things in here for when I'm 
packed up. So I'm going to put that stuff down there. I'm going to put these up here. Put the lid on. Got that stored. Okay. Now this is a nifty little thing that I got from my buddy Jeremy Buchanan from Soaring Eagle Outdoor. This is a stand for my Trangia burner. You just put these two little pieces together like this. The burner sits on top. So you're not going to accidentally knock it over or anything like that. And there's two little more pieces. It's kind of hard to do this when you're filming with one hand on the phone. But um, these just slide right together. Two more pieces. And normally I would take this, this cover off. And then this just sits up on top. You sit your pot on top. I do recommend using a windbreak if it's going to be windy. But yeah, Jeremy made that for me. So, got that. Okay, now over here, I've got a stainless steel water bottle. And nests with my Tox 750 milliliter titanium pot with a bale handle. Got some extra denatured alcohol back there. I got a little bag that I use when I carry I carry that one around camp and I put my things that I might need easy access to if I don't want to carry my big pack with me everywhere I go. And here I got some silverware. I got my light my fire spork. I've got to go wear got bamboo. I've got a fork, a knife, a spoon, some chopsticks. All comes in this handy dandy little pouch. With a little carabiner on it so you can hook it to your back. For lighting, I have my Yuko lantern. This one's the rechargeable one. You actually can charge a phone or something like that from this little USB connector point. Um, I prefer not to. I use a separate charger for that, but it's a nice feature that I could if I wanted to. But this one's kind of nice because it's got several different intensities. I could use it as a as a flashlight like this, or I can pull this open and have it in lantern mode. This particular one, I hang from my ridge line. And it, it has a dimmer, so I can make it a lot dimmer if I like. Or I can leave it really bright. But handy dandy Yuko flashlight. This is my other Yuko lantern. And now this one I would not hang from my ridge line because it has an actual fire burning candle in it, like an actual flame. But this one's kind of neat. I got the LED flashlight adapter in the bottom, and then you pull it up. It's got a glass mantle, and it's got a candle that actually has a real candle in there. You could hang this one from a tree or something of that nature. Like I said, I wouldn't hang this from a ridge line or anything like that because it's got a real flame in it. And it will get hot. But it's kind of nice because it burns real candles. It's got a window on the side so you can see how much candle you have left. And there's a spring in the bottom that keeps the candle pushed up to the right height. So you can hang that out there. A word of advice or caution. The top of this, if you are burning it, does get hot. So don't touch that if it's hot. And this um, mantle here is real glass. So I keep mine in a little silicone pouch so it is safe in my pack. So I got that. I know this seems like a lot of stuff, but that's okay. On this particular trip, it doesn't matter because we're going to be kind of car camping. And there's some things I'm bringing just because I want to show some people and I'm going to be doing some demonstrations. Okay, now. This is a little pouch that I carry with me pretty much everywhere I go around camp. And here I've got a small first aid kit attached. And here I've got a tactical flashlight. A 
We've got a ferro rod here with a peanut lighter in it that Sean Hearn at SH Bushcraft, he gave this to me. It's one that I use often, it works really well. And here I've got my black diamond spot headlamp. I've got a big lighter with some duct tape wrapped around it. I've got extra batteries down here. I've got a little bit more fire kit here. I've got some health Hellfire from Adirondack Knife Works. Uh, my buddy David Gray sent that to me. So I got that here. And behind that, I've got my compass, an all weather notebook with a space pen attached that'll go down in the pouch too. A little bit more of the safety type things here. I'm very fair complected, so I have some a little can of sunblock. And the mosquitoes and ticks are really bad, so I've got a bottle of DEET. Um, I am kind of hosting this gathering, so I have a little bit bigger first aid kit. And I've got my potty pack and hygiene items there. Got some work gloves and a schmog. Uh, schmog's very handy. You can use it for all kinds of things. You can use it as a, as a shawl or a head cover, a towel. Um, I've even worn it as a dress once. I've got my boonie back there, and I've got a packable down jacket back there because it is supposed to get down into the 40s. I've got a Gobi Gear seg pack down there that I just got that I'm going to try that out because I think it'd be a good way to keep like my clothing items together clean and re reasonably dry. So, yeah, this is kind of my pack dump for this weekend's trip, it, I, except with the exception of my top coat and under coat, which are already packed. And of course, a little bit more water and a little bit more food. But you kind of get the idea. So I've got my shelter. So that's my cover. I've got cordage. Normally I would have some bank line too, but I couldn't seem to find it. Got some cutting tools, combustion and fire tools. Got my cook kit stuff over here. And I've got some lighting, first aid toiletries and things to keep me warm because it's going to be a little bit chilly. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you at the meet.